my name is Elliot and today I'm going to be talking to you about the Deaf Works Everywhere campaign and my advice for young deaf people starting work for the first time. Deaf Works Everywhere is a campaign to get more deaf young people into work and also into jobs that inspire them. So in my early teens, because of my deafness, I was led to believe that my career options were limited and was even told by people at school and careers fairs because of my deafness, I couldn't do the same kind of work as my hearing peers could. Although I knew this wasn't necessarily true, it really did knock my confidence at the time. We are not less employable because of our deafness and the stigma around employing those with disabilities needs to change. This is what Deaf Works Everywhere is all about. Deaf Works Everywhere is working hard for young deaf people in the UK to have better careers support, more work experience and volunteering opportunities and is challenging the expectations of what young deaf people can achieve. If you want to find out more, you can check out their website and the campaign film which will be in the links in the description below. So back when I was 13, 14 years old and I was doing my work experience and my GCSE choices, the biggest question I had for myself was, how do I know what I want to do? At the time, it felt like once you chose your GCSEs, that was it. You had to follow this exact path and do all of these specific subjects for your A-levels and then have to go to uni. And then after uni, you find a job. And then once you're in that job, you stay in that job for the rest of your life until you retire. Of course, this is absolutely not true. It's just, that's what it felt like was being expected of me at the time. As a young person, there's our parents, our friends, our school, and all of these big influences in our lives that can make it really hard to know what choices you want to make and what career path you want to take. So here are three pieces of advice I wanted to give on that. Number one, don't put pressure on yourself to know right now exactly what you want to do in the future. And also be open to the fact that you might change your mind completely. When I was choosing my GCSEs, I had my compulsory subjects and then I had five choices. Now, as a kid, I loved playing with Lego and I loved building things. And I remember when I asked my parents, you know, what job involves building and designing things? They said an architect. I was seven. I think they just wanted me to build them a nice big house, but never mind. So after talking to my parents, four of my five GCSE choices were going to be around me doing architecture. However, my fifth GCSE choice was drama, and it's here that my passion for acting and theatre really sparked. After my GCSEs, I then did completely different subjects for my A-levels. So yeah, don't be worried if you change your mind about what you want to do. Number two, do the things that you love, that you're interested in, and that make you happy. I finished sit form in 2017. I then took a gap year to get some work experience before I moved to London to do my drama degree that I'm currently studying now. I love my degree so much and I'm so glad that I made the choice that I did for myself and went for something that I'm really passionate about. And finally, number three, don't let anyone tell you that your deafness is a limitation to the work that you can do and what you want to do. Over the years, I've had so many people tell me that I wouldn't be good enough at acting or music just because of my deafness. I also felt that growing up and not seeing any deaf people in these professions meant that I would be less likely to get roles and that I'd have to work twice as hard as my hearing peers just to be cast in shows. Whatever job you want to get into, there is a way for you to get there and your deafness is not a limitation to that. This is why it's great that Deaf Works Everywhere is campaigning to support young deaf people and to educate employers and bring awareness to the issues that deaf people face in work. Now, the final thing I'd like to talk about is our rights in the workplace and also some extra pieces of advice about working as a deaf person during the pandemic. As deaf people, we deserve and have a right to be able to work without any extra difficulty from the workplace that we're in or the people in it. If you live in England, Wales or Scotland, your rights as a deaf employee are protected by the Equalities Act 2010. This means you are entitled to equal access support and you should not be discriminated against because of your disability. If you are discriminated against because of your deafness by a customer, employee or an employer, then it may feel really hard to speak up about it. But I urge you to talk about it with someone that you trust and to take the necessary steps together to bring it up with your HR department at work. I've never been discriminated against directly by someone before in the workplace because of my deafness, but it's a good idea to know what to do and to know what your rights are in case it should happen. With the pandemic meaning lots of people are wearing masks and PPE right now, working with the general public and others as a deaf person is harder than ever, but there are some ways around it that I wish to share with you to make it easier. One, wear a badge to remind people that you're deaf. Wearing something that says I'm deaf or I lip read on it can be a great way of notifying someone before they communicate with you what your needs are. Two, 
ask your colleagues or customers to lower their masks when speaking to you. You don't need to feel bad about asking this of people, and government guidance states that anyone is allowed to temporarily remove or lower their mask if they're speaking to someone who relies on lip reading and facial expressions to communicate. 3. Ask your employer whether your colleagues can wear clear face masks instead. Having a clear face mask or transparent wall between you and the customer can help you both feel safer in asking the customer to lower their mask so that you can lip read. 4. Get creative. If a customer doesn't feel comfortable removing or lowering their face mask for you to lip read, then they can always type out what they want to say on their phone. There are some fantastic apps that include speech to text dictation that can be downloaded onto your phone. And 5. If none of these options are possible, ask if you can be reassigned to an alternative role. For example, you're working directly with customers and they can't lower their masks. See if there is another task that you can do that does not require you directly working with customers. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope the advice that I gave was helpful. If you're a deaf adult or young person with a job, careers or work experience story that you'd like to tell, please comment on this video or message the Deaf Works Everywhere Instagram page listed below. Thank you so much for watching.